Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the Mirage 2000C and we're looking at the revised RWR radar warning receiver and the jammer slash ECM. The radar warning receiver is a passive system that listens to radiation from foreign radar sources, friendly or foe, and it cannot distinguish between friendly or foe by the way. It then classifies these radio sources and presents them to the pilot in a top-down display and it's a typical system of an aircraft this age. First of all, to turn the system on or off, we've got RWL there, off, on or test. Here is the master panel for the RWR. So this is a top-down display. We're in the center here, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. This is our critical threat ring that we'll talk about in a second. Here are a selection of four radar sources. November, Star, Plus, and six. Each type of known radar is catalogued and given an icon. I will now show on the screen the list of icons and you can freeze that and store that if you want. So we can see that we've got an SA6 there, we've got an F15 there, we've got an F16 there and we've got a naval unit or a naval radar there. Just to confirm you can see there's our Mirage, there's the SA6, F15, F16 and naval unit. Note that it does not show in any way the distance or the strength of the signal. It does show the bearing, so pretty much to our 12 o'clock is the F-15 and slightly right the SA-6, further left on the 11 o'clock the F-16 and 10 o'clock the naval unit. The symbols can either be in the low priority threat ring which is around the outside like all of these guys are. That means that their radars are search radars only and a search radar cannot actually do any damage to us. If one of those symbols gets inside this ring which is the second position it can be then it is critical because it is a track or a lock radar. That could potentially turn into a missile or a gun and that could hurt you. If one of these radar signals became inside the critical threat ring it would also then have a chevron below it. That chevron would tell you that that is a lock or a track radar source now. If that then changed to a continuous wave radar we would have a chevron on the bottom and a chevron on the top and it would flash. That would tell you it's continuous wave which would be supporting a missile. As well as that it would flash. As well as graphics we also have the obligatory audio signals. A single beep will mean that a new threat has been identified again either friendly or foe and it will be added to the list of symbols on the scope. If a radar source is tracking us we'll have a continuous beep and if a radar source is firing at us i.e. a continuous wave radar then that will have another type of beep and we'll have a look at that in a minute. Also on the panel we have a brightness knob. We also have systems status lights here that have relevance to the RWR. So S status light which is currently on is lit when our jamming system is warmed up and ready for operation. Next ECM this is lit when the jammer is actually emitting signals. RWR means that obviously the RWR is powered up and operating. MWS means that the missile warning system is powered up and operating. And the J, this is English cockpit version obviously, and the J indicates that the chaff and flare dispenser system is powered up and ready for operation. You can see that the azimuth of these sig signals has changed slightly as these aircraft move around us. I think it's only fair now if we unpause and go and attack one of these signals and get shot at. The SA-6 will probably be closest. Okay. If we pause there, we can see that the SA-6 now has a chevron below it. It is now tracking us, which means that it can, at some point, fire a missile. Let's carry on. Okay. You can see now that we've got a chevron below and above for a continuous wave. It is now supporting a missile. The tone has changed and it's also flashing. And if we were to look out in front of us, somewhere should be a missile fired at us. There it is. Just left the launcher now. So we could see from here that a missile has been launched. We can see the azimuth is about 11 o'clock. So what we do now is turn right 90 degrees, get down and notch the missile, which gives us a great opportunity to show us that there are dead zones in the detection of this system. So if I pin up on the screen here, these are the zones that the system can actually see. As you can see, above or below the aircraft, it is blind. That's just how an RWR system works. If I were to present my belly to the missile, You can see right there it's disappeared and that's because it's in the dead zone, uh, the belly of the aircraft. That doesn't mean you've beaten the missile, it just means you can't see it. Let's unpause again and try and get it back. And you can see when we're back in the area of coverage the missile has magically reappeared again. 
Again, we can tell the azimuth of the missile, so it's now to our 9 o'clock, which is really useful for notching a missile, but we can't tell the range. And another thing to point out is that if it's a FOX-1 semi-active radar homing missile like we've got here, then the missile does not have its own radar. The source of that 6 there is actually the launcher, not the missile, so you need to bear that in mind. If the missile is a FOX-3 type missile, an AMRAAM Phoenix that has its own radar, then the symbol will be representing the actual radar on the missile, not the launcher. So there's two different things that you need to think about. Let's go ahead and complete the notch. Missile is defeated. Turn around and away we go. That is the basics of the RWR operation in the Mirage. Next we're going to look at the JAMA slash ECM system. It is off there on there and testing there when it's on we have three options we can have it in standby where it's warmed up and ready to go but not emitting square where it is emitting on command pcm where it is emitting all the time we need to look at the command for emitting and it is that command there that toggles it on and off to see whether it's emitting or not it is that light there so that means it's got power that means it's emitting or not so on off on off and pcm it's on all the time so I'm sure you all know what noise jamming does, but in case you don't, if a hostile, that same SAM site, was tracking me like he did and or firing a missile, then I would want to turn on my jammer emissions and that would make it harder for him to track me. The missile may miss or he may just lose track altogether. Or I can have jammer emission on all the time so if I don't want to have to worry about it with PCM. Or I could have the square box mode on and I could set jammer on before I went in to the danger zone. There's different ways depending on how you want to use it. Generally speaking though, if you're trying to be stealthy, having your jammer on makes you very visible. So the best method, the normal method is to have it under square here and just turn it on when you think you need to turn it on to defeat a hostile radar. So all I've got to say about the RWR and the ECM. I hope that helps and see you later.